Jalen Polk. Can you let me call on you, Albert? <laughs> <laughs> we got to pick them. I got We got to pick. pick. The, the, the Patriots have selected Washington wide receiver Jalen Polk, 37th Thank overall. Thank you. Give me the skinny on Jalen. <laughs> Jalen Polk is a dog. That's how he's been described to me. One of the most competitive receivers in this year's class. He played for that explosive offense with Michael Penix at Washington and, of course, benefited from that offense and having Roma Dunze to work alongside. But one of the most competitive guys fights for the ball, a good route runner. He is not necessarily thought of, from the people I've spoken to, as a number one type. Height, weight, speed? He's going to be in that six-foot range and probably right around the 200-pound range, you know, in yep. the Patriots' parlance, I think we're talking about a Z receiver here, James. He's probably a number two, yep. goes in the second round, has a little bit of size, something that this Patriots receiver room doesn't have a ton of right now. James? I, I, think, I think he's a good football player. Watching him at Washington, he makes plays, runs good routes, makes the contested catches. They have a few a few guys, a few talented players that will get picked in this draft, just like Roma Dunze did in the first round. But I think he fits right in with his receiver group. It may not be you know, a, a number one guy that really dictates coverage, but they have a lot of talented players. And that's what we had a lot of the times when we were playing. We had some very interchangeable mm-hmm. receivers from Julian to Danny Amendola to Chris Hogan, where, you know, Julian was the guy, Grunt was the, the main target, but each and every one of our receivers, you know, on the, in the room really took turns making plays, and maybe that's what they're looking to do going forward. Got us some official measurements here, Tom. Six foot one, 203 pounds, not a burner. Again, this guy's not a number one receiver necessarily, ran in the low four fives. I feel as though, though, this is probably a culture-setting kind of pick. Obviously, this is Great. a need. They need a receiver help. This guy is thought to be incredibly tough and incredibly competitive. And when you are trying to establish something here, the way Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayo are, and you want to try to add talent at this position, I think you get a two for one with this guy because you get the culture ad and you're addressing the need. He comes from a really good program that's got a reputation for turning out really good guys, and he was in a competitive room, and I think that matters too. He's in the room with Roma Dunze. He's in the room with McMillan. Um, he was competing on a very high level there. Um, you know, I just I, I look at this as the sort of pick where it's okay. Like this is a guy who's coming from a winning program, who is part of building yep. something, who can be a part of something here, and um, who's going to be able to fit into a place that I think is going to be culture setting rather than building on what's already there. They're, they're going to love something like Tom, especially in this offense, right? We're, we're been talking about how this is sort of a variation of the Shanahan offense. We know how much. Kyle Shanahan appreciates his receivers blocking. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the kind of thing that I think Patriots offensive coaches will absolutely love when it comes to Jalen Polk. He's going to get his nose in there. He brings a toughness, a quotient to this position that not a lot of guys do. Yeah, A.D. Mitchell is still on the board. That is an ex-receiver, James White. That is a a player who can burn it. We've talked about him a little bit with character concerns, very emotional player. The Patriots instead opting for Polk, who is, as by all accounts here, um, a dog, a guy who is going to do everything you want. Look at this group of um, players now. You have Demario Douglas, Kendrick Bourne, Juju Smith-Schuster, K.J. Osborne, Hunter Henry, Austin Hooper, and Antonio Gibson we should include as a pass catcher yep. as well, and Ramondre. Mm-hmm. Do you think the Patriots offense has enough good players? Right. I, I, met, I didn't mention Taquan Thornton because the poor guy just hasn't yeah. done nothing yet. But do you think the Patriots have a good enough complement of <laughs> offensive skill players? Or are they all... B's and C pluses. I believe they're good enough. I think this is how our receiver groups were built for a lot of the years that I was there. It's just a lot of depth. I said Julian was the main target of the receiver position, but you had Chris Hogan, you had Malcolm Mitchell, you had Philip Dorsett. When they when the plays were called for them, they went out there and made plays. So I think that's what it'll be this season. Who knows will be who will be the starting three for them? I know Kendrick Bourne and Pop Douglas will be the the number one and number two targets for them, which they more than deserve. And, they, those guys can work the inside. They can work the outside, make contested catches. They can you know, take those short routes and make it plays that way. I think it's going to be a competitive group, and I'm excited to see what they do. I want to see Juju you know, bounce back in this year, too. Hopefully he stays healthy. You know, They paid him a good amount of money. I want to see him go out and be productive this, up, this upcoming season because they have a lot of different body types. I want to see Taekwon do something, too. Yeah. Like I, I was there with Taekwon for you know a few weeks during training camp during during OTAs. He has all the talent in the world. We all know he has the speed, and he can he can get in and out of his cuts. It's all about confidence. You know, maybe having you know a new coaching staff, a new offensive coordinator. You know that sometimes that little change could you know spark some new life into you. James, 
As far as Tyquan Thornton, who was a second round pick in 2021 as well, 2021 or 2020? Or 2022? Uh, who was the, yeah, Tyquan Thornton was the 2022 second yeah. round pick. Sorry. So I remember watching Tyquan Thornton, James, during a training camp practice, track a ball over his shoulder that he caught basically yeah. like Willie Mays. And yep. after that catch, Jalen Mills actually applauded him because it was such a ridiculous catch. There is talent there. Can he be an X, though? Is he too skinny? Does he fit that body type? Because the Patriots are still Xless. Yeah, he, he can do it. Like I said, it's all about confidence. It's all about the reps. And it's all about, you know, building on it during practice, building, you know, chemistry with Jacoby or Drake May, whoever it may be, allowing them to feel confident when you're on the backside and you have that one-on-one -on -one coverage that you can win on the slant routes. You can win on the go routes. It's third down and five. We know you can win if I look your way. I think that's what it's all about. He has the speed to where every – Every single corner is going to feel threatened by him just by his speed. So he has to use that to his advantage because he's quick enough to get in and out of those cuts. Like most guys that are that fast, you typically don't see them get in and out of cuts. And you have guys like Tyreek Hill, Xavier Worthy, who just got drafted by the Chiefs, mm -hmm. which I don't know how the league let, let them get him. But Taekwon is that same type of player. He just has to go out there and prove it. You know what's cool about him is he throttles up and down. You probably don't remember Bethel Johnson. He was here. He had one speed and it was 4-3 all the time. Tyquan Thornton actually does throttle up and down. Jalen Polk has been officially uh, announced. Mike Unwenu went to the podium and did that. We're going to show you some more Jalen mm -hmm. Polk and bat it around as we talk about this because it's important to see what you just bought. And as we look at Jalen Polk coming up, I want to ask you guys, what do the Patriots look like on offense with Jalen Polk catching passes from Jacoby Brissett, Phil? Are they going to be the most dynamic, you know, type of offense that's going to throw down the field and give safety sweaty palms, Tom? I don't know with this player, but he played in a down-the-field strike mm -hmm. kind of offense, and he tracks the football well. I, I know one thing that teams like about him is that he's not afraid to work the middle of the field. And, again, I think it is important. It's not, it's not the number one thing, but I think it is important for us to point out the kind of offense we think they're going to run. Exactly. Those throws over the middle of the field that require timing and anticipation from the quarterback and his receivers, this, those are going to be the types of routes that Jalen Polk is not going to be afraid to run. He's shown that he can yeah. do that at Washington. He's been part of a big play offense. He can play down the field, even though he's a 4-5-2 guy, Tom. You can run him down the field. You can play him on the boundary. He's versatile. Play him inside and out. So those are the kinds of things, James, that I think the Patriots would have loved really in any era, versatility, toughness, and I think the same is true yeah. for this particular offensive group that they have there now. That's what I believe. If this offense is going to be similar to a Kyle Shanahan offense, you don't necessarily need guys to take the top off the defense. It's run, play action, get the ball out of your hands quickly, and you need guys who are going to block make tough contested catches, and are able to run after the catch. And I think all those guys are already on this roster. It's, we just have to wait to see how this offense actually shakes out, you know, during training camp, preseason, when the regular season rolled around. We'll really get a good view of what they could potentially be. All right, Jalen Polk from Washington. He is the Patriots pick at number 37. The Patriots in that trade down, Albert, reporting that it was the fourth round pick that they got in exchange, correct? Right, they got a fourth and then gave back a fifth, I believe it was. So a pick swap to pick move swap. up from so the they, fifth round. But they get a pick in the, I think right around, I think it's 110 they're getting back. So right. another high-end day three pick. Good. James, uh, question I have for you. Um, here's a little bit more of uh, who that? Oh, it's right there. <laughs> who that? Oh, I heard the video. Uh, let me ask Old you. clips. Let me ask you this. Um, James. He, he played at Texas Tech, so you might have just seen him yeah, there at Texas Tech. Saw him for the freshman he year transferred Texas. to Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping you on your toes, TC. Yeah, how Cap's important got, is Cap's it? Bringing the freshman year video. Who, uh, how important is it, James, to bring in a rookie wideout in the second round to kind of marry up with your rookie quarterback? Is it positive that these guys can develop a rapport? Because Juju might be in his last year here. Um, Kendrick yeah. Bourne coming off the injury. He might be in his last year here. You're going to have both of these yeah. guys for at least four years together. Yep. Yeah. You want to build that rapport. You saw, you know, the Chicago Bears do it. They got Caleb Williams, Roma Dunze. You want to get guys that are going to build chemistry for a very long time, just like Tom did with Julian, like Tom did with Gronk. I think every QB loves to have their favorite targets, and hopefully, you know, that's Drake May, you know, Pop Douglas, and Jalen Polk. Maybe those are going to be, you know, the future – and Ramondre Stevenson. Can't forget about my guy. He'll be the back there for a long time. Hopefully, you know, he gets a deal done sometime soon.
brought to you in part by John's Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when the drains don't flow.